Hello, I'm uh, Richard Raffin and in this video uh, you'll see how I made this little cross grain box. So these are going to be uh, a box, basically that kind of shape, that's because this is falling in half. So uh, the main thing is the lid's made first, I just roughed that out uh, with a kind of tenon on the end um, and I want to get that true because the size of the lid um, has impact on what I do with the base and then I'm going to uh, uh, then I'll make the base and then the lid gets fitted to the base later. Uh, this was made um, gripped uh, by a chuck round the outside I'm not quite sure how I'll grip this one uh, we'll deal with that when we need to know. So that's broadly where we're going with this one. In this uh, project you see just about every cut there is um, with the standard tools around face work. So this will be the lid because of the bark on it. Um, so this will be the inside which is where I'm going to drill the hole. The bottom one Ah, oh, that's got a um, little bit of bark and the chances are the base is going to be wider than the top of the base so that'll be the center of the uh, that'll be the um, the base now I've had to eyeball that center and uh, the more you eyeball the better you get at it generally but you might pay to check and just see how we go a whole millimeter out so I'm on form today so just need to drill a couple of holes so this is going to be the the in the top of the bottom now you see on the drill here when I spin it you see some lines and that tells me how deep I need to go or tells me where I am Oops. and where I am is a flat battery but I've got enough of a hole there so I've got another battery ready to go right so I do the lid section first now I don't need all this screw on the chuck so I'm just going to space that out so a couple of little spaces so I've got about uh, Oh, I don't know, three eighths of an inch, about eight or nine mil sticking out. That'll be that. So, and just make sure it's right on. Now, all I want at the moment is to get this round and to have a tenon on the end. So, I've got uh, a lot of options as to uh, what shape I'm going to do. And this is claret ash, it's bone dry, and I'm going to use the uh, half inch spindle gouge to rough down which is what I normally use in these situations. So hand on the rest, I'm just going to swing the edge through the corner here. Now from here Just swinging the tool through an arc there and I can go on swinging and then I've got the bevel riding here which means I can just use a shear cut up to the end. Don't go racing off the edge because that just splinters the rim. So roll the tool over and just use the right wing, ease that in. So still a little flat area there I want to get rid of. Down across the bottom I'm going to use the left wing tools pretty well on its side to start and then drop the handle and roll the tools up slightly, open the flute up so it's out at about 45 degrees. Now where is the bark which is the main thing here uh, so I don't want that in the final piece um, that's where the bark is at the moment so just mark that and that's about the right size for a chuck anyway so by the time I've and there's the other bit of the bark so I'll just take away that bit and a foot 
So at the end of that cup, the tool is right on its side. Just squeeze it back, and then the jaws will seat right in that corner. It doesn't need to be dovetailed. It can just be just be straight in, and that'll be fine. And that's really all I need to know at the moment. I'd like this flat on the top, or slightly concave. So that's the lid section done. Oops, and you can see that short screw grips pretty well. And at this stage I just get an idea of where my lid's going to be in relation to the base. It'll be fine, so. Oops. Let's wind that on. Normally I kind of throw these onto the screw, but this blank's just a bit light for that. So all I do again here is true up what I've got. So I want to get rid of the, the bark and uh, or true up the bottom. So. So that's a shear cut from there. I've got the bevel lined up with where I want to go, which is straight in. One time in there, this is a three eight spin, uh, half inch spindle guard. It's there now, the, the bottom, oh, I can still go another I'll probably take off nearly half an inch off the diameter and I can come up from the other end for that. Now I'm going to have a, an underhand grip here. My finger comes underneath the rest and then I've got my thumb on the top and that gives me much more control than if I've got my hand and I'm pushing. So I can only go so far physically and I've got just a lot more control pushing with my thumb and these fingers are resisting. Now, coming around the bottom, there's quite a bit of uh, to come off here, so I'm going to whoop, tend to have the rest at an angle because then my hand's here out of the way. If I have the rest across here, it's just not so easy, not so comfortable. So, a little squeeze in. The tool here is moving, pivoting on the end of the handle rather than on the rest. If I move the rest in, I can take, if I pivot it on the rest, I can take off too much. What I want to do is just squeeze in like that. Now I can come across and take a shear cut. See the bevel starts with the tool on it, the tools on its side, bevel heel onto the wood, pivot the tool forward, roll it very slightly clockwise to get a shaving, little shaving, then you can move. Now stop it and look, see what defects there are. There's a knot there which I can probably cope with. Um, I started turning when a defect was a defect and if I had anything like a knot in it, even if it was filled, people would not buy the work in the early 70s. It um, had to be clear of everything. So I've got a, a base there. Um, I'm just going to smooth that off with the, uh, the scraper, so just ease it back a little bit, um, just so I've got more room to angle the tool. If I go very hard here, that's vibrating because the top of the blank isn't absolutely flat. So I just need to go more gently to stroke the surface. And just check that that's uh, flat again. 
So now I've got that, now I've got to decide what to do with the base. Now if we look at the half bowl with the base here, I've got two options. This was a demo piece I did somewhere or other um, and uh, because of the chucks available I had to expand inside a recess. Now there are two downsides to that. One is you reduce the depth to which you can hollow um, or it means you've got a very thin section um, which uh, when the work starts to scream at you and you don't get as good a grip if you're gripping there as you do on the outside. So I much prefer to grip around one of these little beads if I can and so um, that's what I'm going to do I hope with one of my bigger chucks. So I'll just, uh, I have dividers already set to the chucks, so uh, I can come down with that. Um, another way of doing it is to, uh, I can just grip that now and then uh, take away any chuck marks later. And I might even do that. Or will I? No, I won't. I'll just uh, come down to this size and uh, then I'm going to grip around the outside. So the idea here is going to be to make a mark. There's center, the little white dot in the middle. Uh, make a mark with the left so it lines up with the right point, which is going to be just about there. And so that's my diameter. And I'll cut that now. So I'll now start to develop the profile and first I'm just going to cut this straight and what I'm going to do here is to cut some beads and that will be the base of the outside I want them slightly tapered So that's that. I'm now going to do the bottom because if I've cut this in at an angle every bit I take off here means I'm going to have a narrower diameter. So I don't need to take very much off the base. Oh, that's the sound you want to hear. Almost, almost brittle. That's nice and clean, a little rebase in the bottom just for decoration. Now coming up the outside, uh, I'm going to use the 3 8 spindle gouge. I'm going to use the, the wing of the tool just to kind of stroke that and that just makes it round. Then this is going to come into the wood, move the tool along the rest a little bit. We come into the wood, move the tool along the rest, then drop the handle and roll the tool slightly clockwise and up again, same again. Might even do another one. Chances are that will go eventually. Now the second one in here, there's a little bit of a I don't know what happened there, but there's a little ridge on it halfway down, so I'm going to go from the middle out and just open the tool up very slightly and just stroke the surface. That looks okay. Now I'm not going to be able to get at the bottom again, so this gets sanded now. Uh, 180 grit should be enough. going to work everything I won't be able to get at later which is certainly the bottom two beads is a good good chance I won't get to the next one either but I'm basically I'll be holding in that in the bottom groove Uh, 240 grit, always 
fold it with the warp, with the with the numbers, so in that way it stays folded. Now for the finish, I've got a got a fair amount of. I've already done a couple of bowls this morning, so I've got a fair amount of boiled linseed in the rag already. That will be enough for that, and I'll put some wax on top of it, which is the, the beeswax, natural beeswax. So I just get the two mixed in together. Right, so that's got the, the bottom of the outside done. And when I get a chuck on. So there's a VM100 chuck, that looks terribly close, that's right, I thought I got it too small for a second, and because that's exactly the right size for the chuck, the chuck shouldn't mark the wood at all, but if it did, um, I can re-chuck it uh, at a later stage anyway. Now to get the overall shape, of the um, the side, I like to kind of uh, bring the bring the sides in a little bit. Here, it just uh, they just um, uh, just seems to look a little bit better than having them dead straight. And I like to get a bit of a curve to it as well. Uh, kind of quite architectural forms, uh, kind of medieval castle type things running through my mind. So I'm just going to cut the curve. Again, using the um, half inch spindle gouge again. Now I could do that with the 3 8 bowl gouge. But the problem, the problem with the bowl gouge is that I can't get the corner the nose right into the corner as I can with the spindle gouge, which is why I prefer the spindle gouge here. We've got the bevel riding. Now I'm going to go into the bottom of the first bead, right on its side, and then just tweak the tool back. And uh, Just gently brush the top. The top bead is just looking a bit big at the moment, so it's going to become a cove. And uh, <coughs> yes, we might get away with that. Um, it'll probably sand a bit flatter anyway, so I'll just leave that for the moment. Come back and do it later if I want to. Coming across the top, I'm going to use the wing of the tool. Uh, tools on its side to start with, just squeeze it in to flatten off the bottom. If you do that with the tool flute up, it's a guaranteed catch because the weight of the wood will be on an unsupported edge, a space under here, and it'll just, well, you're hanging on to it if you're doing that kind of thing, and the wood will go over your shoulder, unless you're standing in the way, in which case it'll catch you in the face. Right, so next is to drill a depth hole. It's a little bit kind of wobbly there for some reason, so I've just uh, made a kind of starting cone for that. Uh, my depth drill is a quarter inch drill, and uh, I'm going to go down so that um, you need to be about a quarter of an inch shy of that mark. I could put another mark on, but I'll eyeball it. Just 
to go down a bit. Oh dear. This is still a fairly new drill to me and I'm getting used to it. Oh, I've got a mark just where I want it. Right, much better. So hang on much firmer this time and push it in up to that mark. And you need to do it in little jabs because the end gets extremely hot and you don't want that to interact with your fingers or the ends of your fingers because they've got nerves on. Okay, so inside of this now I've got the depth established. I'm going to use the uh, 3 8 spindle guard. just want to get the tailstock out of the way. Uh, 3 8 bowl guard rather and with this you should have the inside out, the bulk of it out in half a dozen cuts at the most. So I put that down to lack of practice. Uh, what happened was that the uh, the tool wasn't right on its side. Uh, I could see a bit of the flute, and so the um, as I came in, the the rim, inner rim, inner lip of the the end of the hole just caught the left wing, and that's what caused it to run back a bit. Not a big disaster really. So this is um, my dust hood getting in the way a bit, that's why I've got a hinge on it. So with a fairly steep nose on this gouge, uh, I want to go straight in, so I'm lining this up with the way I want to go, which is in. And then once I'm in there, then I can rotate it slightly anti-clockwise to get a better shaving. Right, so that's uh, really got the bulk of it out. I can go back a little bit more. And the rest I do with, uh, with a square end scraper, which is, uh, this is a three quarter inch. I need to get the light down a bit. I hope it isn't going to be in the way of the camera now. So, not trying to use the whole lot, only about a third of the edge at one time. And you watch what's happening over at about four o'clock, just over the other side of the rest. Now I'm holding the tool back so you can see what's happening inside um, but usually I'm, I've am i got uh, I hold the tool much nearer the ferrule so the, um, the handle is under my forearm and that means that I can still see what's happening but I've got much more control of the tool now I'm trying to take too much at one go there so just ease it over slightly Use the tool towards centre and take less of a cut. And then I can feel, just drag the tool back, feel where the step is and then carry on with the rest of the cut. And just see how we're going for depth and so on. Now that's, uh, so I'm down to about the top of the uh, of that bead of the of the uh, third bead in fact so which means that the bottom is still oh, about half an inch thick so it doesn't need to be like that now uh, coming down the inside here you can always try with a with a square and scraper but no matter how smoothly evenly you go the chances are it's going to tear and that's what's happened here with this end grain so i'm going to go down a little bit further in the bottom first and then cut the side with uh, uh, with a spindle gouge, uh, with a 3/8 spindle gouge. 
So first is to go down, um, just check that again, this time with the, uh, with the, with the uh, scraper. So oh, I'm down a little bit further than I thought. Um, I'm near the top of the second bead, so you might just get some a, a reference here. So these are the rare earth magnets, so I can go down to at least there anyway. So. Yeah, I've got about an eighth of an inch to play with, so... I'll just open that up. And then down across the middle. Across the middle where there's that. I'll just mark it so you can see, see better. Um, there's the centre. So to go from there don't try and get the edge right right on the point because right on center because you just what you won't do it other than by luck so you come up from underneath and then move across right next is to get down the side now you don't want these boxes too thin in the wall um, this is face work I don't think I mentioned that before. Um, this is face work, so the whole thing's going to move in and out with, uh, with seasonal changes in humidity. Um, so it's going to be a loose lidded box, and the thicker this is, I find, the less it's inclined to move, uh, or it doesn't seem to move so far with the season. So I'm going to come in here. Now, cutting, I'm really going to get the, the this, this is the 3 8 spindle gouge right on its side and get it into the wood. If you're a bit unhappy doing that then you can use the corner of the tool just to get started and then you've got somewhere to ride the bevel. Tools on its side and you roll the tool slightly to get a shaving and then away you go down to the bottom. So I want to get fairly well over the gouge here, over the handle. And you can't see what's happening inside because there's too many shavings in the way. So you just have to go on down to the bottom and that will give you generally a pretty good clean cut, which it has here. And uh, there'll be no need for 60 grit or anything like that. Um, the big hazard is when you're near the bottom is just going too far and ending up with a big kind of pastry cutter. Although I've never actually done that, but it always seems to be a, or seen it done, but it always seems to be a, a possibility. Now coming into the corner here, this gouge just needs to be skewed slightly more. So in this situation, it's, it's already about 89 degrees up in the corner and just a slight curve. It's going to have a bit more of a curve. So all I've done is just uh, swung the handle around so I've, that's just slightly more uh, slightly more radius and and uh, angled skewed so I can get into the corner with the tool and let's see where I am and again I'm watching what's happening over down at about five o'clock that angle Richard as you're right down in the bottom of the bowl what's the angle of your tool there? Uh, do you mean tilted yeah. down? Yep. It just needs to be less than 90 degrees so when you're on a flat surface um, that angle in there needs to be less than 90 it's rather like uh, let me get the half box um, so if we were here and uh, how are we going to look at it this way? So if, 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 if when you're, oh, look at it here, 
when you're there it's going to be safe but if you're up up at that angle um, that that means the the woods going to grab the edge and the, the edge is going to want to go through the surface I'm sure if that's a very good angle or not does that show yeah no I was thinking of you personally oh, yeah. right. okay <laughs> Otherwise, I normally do it with the with the hand here. So if you can, uh, yep. So if you have the tool sticking up like that, it's going to and the wood's coming down. It's going to grab. But so you always want the angle between the top of the tool and the surface you're cutting less than 90 degrees. And that's what the negative rake tools are designed to do. Um, you can still catch a negative rake tool, um, but uh, it's it's. Uh, it's designed to prevent that happening. The downsides, I think, in the, in this kind of thing with a negative rake tool is that it's like using a skew chisel into the corner. The two sides keep the point from getting right into the corner, whereas with this one, um, I think you're much better off. Right, so that's done on the inside. That's good. And uh, I now need to just true up the rim because I've still got the remnants of that catch. I usually do this with the just to the right of the nose with the um, uh, 3 8 deep fluted bowl gouge and hands on the rest and I'm just going to push it forward with my fingers and I want to tilt it in very slightly so it sits better with the um, uh, with the base. I just need to make sure I've got plenty of lid uh, to go over and now I can sand that. Now on the inside because I've been dealing with um, you've got the cross the, the end grain I think it's cut cleanly enough that I might be able to get away with the 180 grit have a quick look. But I would expect to use 120 in here That's good enough to sand with 180. Right, sanding the inner rim there, because otherwise when I go in I might just cut myself reaching in the bottom. Across the bottom it's pretty pretty clean, so Now I've got to address the outside, uh, forgotten about that. I think I'll just uh, eliminate the, um, just get some more light over it. Um, just going to eliminate this little groove thing at the bottom here, I'm not quite sure. I might just have a curve at the bottom here. I'm in severe danger of having neither one thing nor the other at this rate. I'm going to use the the bowl gouge because when I come round to the corner it's going to give me just straight off the nose that'll give me something Ooh, I thought I could live with it but I can't so that's got a bit of a lump there I'm setting myself up little problems here get rid of that lump. And I'd really like to keep this as a bead in here so just arcing the tool in very gently. I've got my finger underneath the rest. Tools against my thumb. These fingers are pulling the tool in really tight down onto the rest. And just pivot the tool through an arc. Just brush the top gouge. Yep, that looks a little bit better. It's it's kind of flat that top of the um, of that bead. Beads don't have to be round, so that's right on its side. Right, I've got a little bit of a lump there, which I can get rid of with um, the square end scraper I've just been using on the inside. This is three quarter inch. Just go very gently.
I don't like to associate a skewed chisel with uh, anything to do with face work but in this situation if I want to get just underneath that little into that corner there just defines the whole area better and it means that the top of the bead I can just roll the tool very slightly uh, anti-clockwise and I don't know if you see there's just a teeny little shaving on the edge there that'll be just gives me a bit more definition in the corner so uh, we're now back to uh, the 180 grit paper gets um, not really cutting uh, I'd like to feel the, 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 the wood kind of trying to drag at the abrasive and it, when it starts to skid over the surface uh, probably time to replace it so don't always put the speed down from first uh, kind of 20 years of my like almost 25 years of my turning career I didn't have variable speed so I certainly wasn't going to put the speed down uh, when you have to change belts to sand but if you've got variable speed uh, it's often uh, you get a slightly you get a slightly better kind of uh, grip if you like um, sanding slower but it's not essential the bottom it's going to skid around all over the place it's always quite difficult to get in there and hold it firm that will do that and uh, so I've got the oily rag I'll get some wax on foot <coughs> it'll all mix in with the oil If I don't like the outside or if the beads have been, um, uh, the, the chucks mark the wood, I can make a jam chuck and just fit the, uh, fit the or, or even put this over, over another chuck and uh, just turn the bottom off so I can grip it from the inside, basically what I'm saying. Right, that seems to be it. There's uh, no mark on the jaws. So that's it. So I now have the box and it's very elegant lid. Um, so uh, I can now, that's where I want to be. So next thing is to get a chuck to, uh, oh dear, dear, dear. I'm getting old or something. So uh, this is the VM190 with what are they, 35 mil jaws, I think, something like that. Where are we? Right, so now we've got the lid. Uh, just another little look. So the idea now is to uh, we get this into the chuck and turn the inside. So 
and if you're going to know how much to hollow inside or where it's essential to know the boundaries uh, within which you can hollow. So first thing is to true up the face and uh, do with uh, half inch spindle gouge and we measure the diameter of the uh, the chuck so this is always an infitting lid because this um, the grains running this way and this will move in and out over time uh, with the seasons and so will that so you want a fairly you want a loose lid so if you put the lid on when the grains lined up um, it'll fit properly and when they've the lid and the base have moved when you twist the lid, um, it'll it'll lock, which people who aren't turners think is very clever. Uh, turners think it's a defect. But, uh, so anyway, so that where it fits, and so that's going to be a little tenon. All I need is enough to stop the lid rattling around. So. This is using the, the wing, the left wing of the uh, half inch spindle gouge. Hmm, quite, quite tough. And then I'm going to cut a little chamfer that way, not a dovetail, because it's a dovetail and I've got it too loose. And I'm going to lose the whole of the, the flange anyway. So we'll just do that. Needs to be slightly more. This is when you practice your entry cuts for feet and things like that. And it still needs to be a little bit more. Right, so that doesn't fit right on, but I've established the diameter which does fit, so that's that. So now the inside comes out, and I don't want a particularly thin lid here. I've got a heap of material to play with uh, for shaping later. Might be a shade narrower than I was anticipating initially, but that's dictated really by the bark which had to come off on the base. was down to the bottom of the drill, the, the uh, chuck hole. So the tool's right on the side. Anyway, you've seen all that. Um, now, around the inside, uh, I'm going to use use my scraper again, the bowl scraper that should get round that curve all right, yep. I don't need all this rest, so let's get a slightly smaller one, shorter one. vibration I'm getting is as much as anything it's probably because I haven't I've got a I'm gripping on a fairly small diameter for the size of the block there's quite a bit of weight out from the uh, from where it's gripping so I now need something to expand the chuck jaws into for when I'm shaping the outside and uh, the best tool for that generally is the uh, little skewed scraper and can I see it? I have no idea where it's got to. Oh there it is. Right, so um, that's going to ease, no that's the point's going to get in the way so we'll just do this with a skew. So this is a, a half inch skewed chisel, I'm going to bring the rest up 
just to shade. Now all I need is a really a, a good groove or two just for the jaws to slide into. So the idea is to try to make these look decorative um, so people look inside and say oh that's a nice little detail but so they don't realize the real point of them is to provide somewhere for the chuck to expand. So that's what that's going to get. Now the inside and I'll also while well, I'm at it just mark the inside. I'm going to waste an awful lot of wood here. That's right, so marking the out the exact depth. You don't go making allowances for it. So it, it's um, and I'm just going to fade that line out so I know that is the point uh, I need to know about. That's where the inside is. Uh, I now sand the inside because I'm not going to get back to that. Make sure that 180 grid is enough, which it is. Oh, I haven't got the black line in the middle yet. Get into those little corners a bit. All I need inside is just something to stop the jaws sliding out. Ah, oh, I've forgotten I need to fit the um, fit the lid too. So get that better. So, so I know at the moment that just it fits on about halfway up that slope. So if I just cut it in um, pretty well straight uh, I think that'll be right so hand gripping the tool really well on the rest tools right on its side as I can raise the handle to drop the edge through an arc into the wood right on its side at the end of that cut that looks nice and shiny so it won't need sanding and if I can hold the lid, hold the box up there and spin the base, or spin the lid, uh, that's probably uh, just about right. Now, on this slope, I've got two options. When I'm making this, I want it undercut so that when we're looking at the half box, um, I want the, it's like a little eave on a house, I want it coming down over the wall so that when you look at the box from the side, when it has warped, uh, you won't see the join uh, or you won't see the gap where it's warped. So that's the purpose for doing that. Slightly undercut and I've got two options for that. Since I've got the gouge I can uh, come in from here right on its side at the end of that cut or I can use the, uh, the skewed scraper just getting dust off and I'm going to be taking a lot of that outside bit off anyway so that'll be fine. Right, uh, back to the sanding. don't even need that much going into the base. No point in taking up valuable storage space so oh, I've picked up the shallow gouge and I'll use the deep fluted for this but just same kind of thing just swinging the edge across trying not to put any pressure on the um, against the wood. I better check that that still fits and I haven't overdone it. It is a shade tight if anything so seen a bit more. Another way of doing it again would be with the uh, 
with the skew and in this time rather than come in like that as a scraper I'm going to use the bevel side and just drop the handle slightly and you get that very fine powder coming off you've got a lot more control just by dropping the handle than moving the tool forwards still smooth enough, it's a shame to scratch it with 180s. which is the blue Soggy there. Not visual. Don't know where that vibration is coming from. And whatever it was is gone. Right, so. I have this supremely elegant box here with, a, with its lid and uh, the main thing I want to know is, well I'll just take it down a bit for a start, I'm going to take it down to uh, like to project the, the line I've got and the side through to the top but uh, we'll just do a little more basic roughing first. So these jaws will expand inside there. Now the inside of the top is where the, the mark stops there. So first thing I'm just going to do is thin down this lock. Half inch spindle gouge again. Now with this you can uh, play around for hours uh, just kind of getting it looking better and worse. So what I want to know now is I want to keep track for the moment of where we'll look at it from the uh, I'm quite sure where you look at best from probably from the end of the lathe. So I want to uh, project this line up to the lid so I'm going to mark that up there and I want the the diameter of the lid less than the the base so I can bring that in to about there so this goes back on the chuck and just feel where it sits and then just tighten it up gently just enough to hang on to it so that's going to be the diameter and that is the projection of the the line of the of the uh, the base coming up through the through the lid. Still with the half inch spindle down. I'm just going to cut straight in here. That's 
that and I've got a little bit too much up here I'm going to round this anyway so So now we're going to see and you can see the thing beginning to take shape. The little knot I was worried about earlier on uh, is now out on the rim so that would be just a little bit of decoration. Um, this could be a wee bit smaller in diameter so I can, uh, that line doesn't quite match up with it. Um, Otherwise the overall proportions aren't looking too bad. I've got heaps of wood up in there so I'm going to flatten the dome a bit and my, uh, let's see how we go here. That's just beginning to feel a shade blunt. Uh, Blunt isn't quite the right word. It's not cutting quite as well as it could do, so if you think that, just go straight to the grinder. It just doesn't take long, you just do a quick, um, uh, just a, a quick retouch, and you probably hear the difference. Just make Right, this needs to be down a little bit in diameter. That. This dome can go. Now, I'm going to start thinking about the knob. We'll see how that looks on the base. Right, so it's getting to look, uh, getting to look much better. Uh, and I've now got to decide: do I want a line which comes up from the side into a dome? or I can take that away and have a kind of pavilion look to it. There's enough wood there. I'll probably lose quite a bit of this knob on the top. Um, and I've got all kinds of other options for the, for the lid too, in the way of shapes and so on. Right, we just had to change the memory card and we can't remember where we were. Anyway, we'll just have another look at the, uh, at the lid. Um, Right, yes, so yes, I was going to be having a dome, uh, whatever, we'll just stick with the dome and uh, go with what we are. But the uh, main idea is to give you the idea of what you can do in these, with these things. So this will now come around, so uh, ash, much better really to scrape it. Getting in there with a the gouge isn't, isn't that easy. Because this is face work, you'd be wanting to take the cuts from the smaller to the larger diameter. Now coming around the corner here, I'm going to use the little square end. This is the three quarter inch square end into the corner. The knob is really looking quite intrusive at the moment. It needs scaling down. 3-8 spindle gouge. And just in there, just think about a little kind of beady or something in there. And I'll reduce the height too. So all the time when you're cutting it, you think, oh, will I keep that or won't I? Almost overdid it, I think, that time. I'm going to take away that little bead. And because, I, because I took off too much first time, I'm now going to reduce the, the dome here. And that's skewed 
Greg will allow me to get right into the corner. And I can drop the rest a bit more and bring the tool up on its side. This shear scrape has this um, curved side so that you can slide easily along the rest. And this is a hardened rest anyway, so. This is a robust hardened dress. The Vic Mark comes with one as well. I just have to pick the robust out of the drawer. Now that, because I've got a corner thing, no, I can't quite get, in, get into the corner with that tool, so back to the square. And to get in onto the top of that little bead, just as I did on the base, I'm going to use the skew on its side as a scraper and just rolling the tool very slightly left I can use the bevel side just to clean up the top of that bead. Now coming round in this area, uh, you can generally get a very clean cut uh, shear scraping that and there are two ways of doing that. One is with the bowl gouge, um, no, not the bowl gouge rather, there's the, the half inch spindle gouge. I'm just moving the rest out so I've got somewhere to rest my hand. And I'm going to squeeze the edge in so the curve, uh, the cove I get is going to come straight off that edge. And if you did this without a strong grip, you'd probably have a pretty dramatic catch. So that's just squeezing the tool around, taking the dust off the wing there. Uh, another way of doing it, probably a safer way of doing it, is with um, uh, I'm going to use the the, uh, the bowl scraper with um, which um, I've used on the inside of the lid. Uh, this is a wider tool again so I've dropped the rest a bit further and I'm going to use the lower wing here. The tool's right up on its side just taking off dust. If I do that with a uh, round nose, it's this, this one, this is a three-quarter inch, same kind of thing, hands planted on the rest, squeeze the tool in. That's actually be the best tool for the job here. Let's do that again so you see where the dust is coming off. Now, that's meant that I've lost that nice little bit of detail I had at the top of the bead, so come in with a skew, flat, and uh, that's almost it. I'll just have another look and see how that looks on the base. So, that's uh, looking reasonably good. I can I'd quite like to flatten that just a little bit. I think it'll look better. Ooh, slightly out of whack. So, well, just in that situation, just it was probably me not holding it in firmly enough. Still slightly out of whack, right? You can live with these things. Um, I'll just use the, uh, the square end scraper. Oh, no, I won't. I'll use the. If I use the square end scraper, I've just got to move so far to bring that tool around. So it's much that's energetic on my part if I've got the skew. So I want to get that lump away. Now for the last little bit I can use the square end. Oops, I've just messed up the, the cove there inadvertently. So back with the small skew.
And that of course has meant that little hole in that uh, that bit is wide and I really want to so come back to the round nose and shear scrape that. And the other thing I'd forgotten to do uh, was just to chamfer this rim here. Well, I happened to pick up this half inch spindle gouge. Um, now across the top uh, it is out of wax so I'm going to have to recut that. It's not very much but just enough to be irritating. I really have to do that because I'm, I haven't yet done the very top of the uh, of the knob. So I tend to put a little kind of button on on the top here, and this is made by just pushing the handle away and rolling the tool over. So get over there and bring it in. And the tool's on its side, bevel rubs, and I take a little shear cut in from the rim from the side. Just stroke that with the left wing of the tool. Right, it's all sandable. thing about this particular project is once you've grasped the steps you can uh, make all kinds of different shapes and uh, I think it's a good idea to make sit out to make three more or less the same and then uh, compare compare the three when they're finished and see which one you prefer and why and then you can uh, sorted that out, you then go off and make another one and uh, that way you start to refine your own personal style which will develop whether you want it to or not, it just happens. So that should be alright. The rest of the wood's been working fairly well so ah, that's picked up that bit of grain so uh, I can either first just try sheer scraping that I'm going to use, uh, just hone the edge up, so use a fairly coarse hone. It's nearer the chuck than I need it to be. So this uh, it's a diamond hone. I'm doing is bringing the bevel heel onto the uh, onto the stone. Oops. Let's get this noise out of the way. So I'm bringing the bevel heel here onto the onto the stone, and then just trying to keep keep the whole thing flat against the bevel. And the bevel slightly hollow, so it's on the ends of the bevel, and that should just give me a little burr on top. So just cut a little bit better. So I'm trying to get rid of that little uh, bit of torn, uh, not particularly well cut grain. Nothing 120 grit won't take care of. And we'll see what happens. Uh, it hasn't 120 grit. It's going to be. done a reasonable job but this is quicker and easier. Right, back 
to the uh, 180, the yellow. Still probably got enough wood up in this part of the lid if I uh, wanted to change the shape again uh, I could do So that's okay. Just on that kind of thing, um, it so happens I did a, a box as a demo the other day and uh, I, because it was a demonstration I wasn't sanding the inside so I need to sand this again and in order to be able to do that I left this little ridge on the outside so a chuck will grab that which will allow me to finish the inside then jaws will expand inside that and I'm really doing the same thing as here only um, that extra ridge will go eventually I don't think it's particularly desirable as a design feature um, but it's there purely so that I can sand the inside a bit later so that now gets um, polished or finished the beeswax and the oily part that could probably do with another squirt of oil no. and with something like this this finish will provide a good base for ongoing polishing one of the problems is if you seal a bit of wood then nothing ever goes into it and it never really develops uh, a really nice patina whereas uh, with this if you polish it regularly the rule of thumb is kind of every day for a week and then every uh, once a month um, for a year and then uh, Kind of every month thereafter but you'll find if you polish this even once a week uh, with furniture polish for um it's a bit wet so i'm going to do this um polish it once a week for uh, six or seven months uh, it'll look like a an, an old antique it'll have a lovely patina on it so that is that one Quite a nice, useful little pot.